Welcome back to Farmer Brown's Paradise Gardening 2019. This will be episode nine. Well, it's been 10 days since I have everything planted out in the garden. So it is now time to start thinking about being proactive instead of reactive about fungus and bugs. Now, many of you know that I follow a spray regime once a week, once for the fun fungal stuff and once for the bug issues. Today, I'm going to be starting with the fungal spray. And the reason I'm doing that is because we are about to have storms later on in the evening and the next two days are going to be rain. So I'm trying to get a, a jump start on prevention for the fungal yucky stuff. There are many products out there that you can use, but the one that I have loved for the last two years is Actinovate. It comes in a little packet like this. It's very easily water soluble, so you could just add it right to your sprayer. Um, you use one teaspoon of this for every gallon of water and also a few drops of soap. Dr. Bronner's Sal Sud Soap is the only soap that I will use in the garden. I know many of you out there have probably used Dawn dish soap before, but, and I'll probably get comments, I've used this, I've used Dawn on my plants and it just works beautifully. Dawn is a detergent. That's why they used it on um, sea life on the, on the birds during the oil spill to get all of the oil off of their feathers because it is a detergent. It breaks down wax and oils. It also, if you spray it in too high a concentration or too frequently on your vegetation, on your plants, it will strip the waxy coating off of the leaves. Every plant has that. It is a protective covering. So if you're using Dawn and it can strip the waxy coating off, you're leaving your plants open and susceptible to uh, diseases and pathogens. Not something I want to do, especially because it takes so much time, money, effort to grow food. I'm not going to risk it with a soap that's cheaper. Um, and in actuality, with Dawn, you have to use about four teaspoons in a gallon, whereas with the Dr. Bronner's Sal Sud Soap, you're just using one and a half, maybe two teaspoons when you're mixing it with the neem. Now, when I mix it with the Actinovate, because Actinovate is not an oil, it is a biofungicide. I don't use near as much soap, but you need to use a little because as I mentioned, all plants leaves have this waxy coating on it and water just tends to just roll off of it. And you want the product to stick onto the leaves, to dry, so to speak, onto the leaves. So you need a little bit of soap. Soap is an emulsifier. It's, it's also a surfactant. So um, it's just good to add a little bit of soap with your Actinovate. Now having said that, anytime you use soap in a spray, you need to be very careful about your pollinators. Because if you are to hit the spray on a bee, um, it will harm them. Well, it penetrates into their, um, through their exoskeleton and it dehydrates them and it'll eventually kill them. So I always maintain that you should spray anything with the soap in the evening after the bees have gone to bed. Now right now there probably aren't any bees, hardly any, in my gardens because the plants are just, you know, 10 days planted. So nothing is blooming yet except for a few flowers. Now in this sprayer I have my gallon of water. I did mix up my teaspoon of Actinovate and about five drops of soap in this little container. 
I just like to do that so that I can shake it. It's easier to shake a small container than it is to shake a great big sprayer. So that's all you're going to do. I have had huge success with Actinovate. I encourage you to try it. That little package costs about $22. It's just, it's a lot. But this will last me a whole season. Usually I can even go well into the fall. Now one thing I will say about this is it has an expiration date. You need to find your expiration date on the package because it is only good for a year after the expiration date. So I always wait to buy my Actinovate until right before I'm going to need it. Additionally, once it's opened, you need to keep it in the refrigerator. So I just, I drop it. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. So I just drop it in a Ziploc bag. I guess you wouldn't have to, but I just like to do that just to make sure nothing is penetrating in my product and I just keep it in the refrigerator. So now we'll go down and spray. We're down here in uh, the area where I planted my tomatoes. And as you're spraying, not only do you want to get the tops of the plants, but you need to try to get the underneath side of the leaves as well. And the stems. And I always spray the top of the soil. You know, your funguses are usually, a lot of them anyway, are soil borne. So give it a good spray. Now, one thing about the Actinovate that I really love, it is not harmful to bees, pets, or humans. I don't have this tight enough. It's leaking air. Um, not harmful to bees, pets, or humans. But of course, as I mentioned about adding the soap in there, uh, you do need to be cautious about the pollinators. When you mix up your Actinovate, don't mix up more than you think you need to use because you need to discard anything that's left. But, I mean, goodness, you can spray it on anything. Roses, flowers, um, anything that you have that's growing uh, that potentially could get a fungus. The other nice thing about the Actinovate is that once I'm out here spraying, I can also prune at the very same time without having to clean my hands or my pruners because the fungicide is on the plant. So, for example, I need to do a little pruning on these tomatoes. Already starting to get little suckers. And I prune off my suckers. Actually, I'm gonna take that lower leaf off Eventually, it will touch the soil, and again, that's how tomatoes get soil-borne fungus. So, don't let the bottom leaves touch the soil. As soon as the rain event is over, I will be spraying for bugs and talking to you about that, showing you how I do it. Um, I don't just use pure neem and the soap. I also add an additional product that goes after the eggs of insects because neem just won't touch eggs. So it's just an extra whammy for beating back the bugs. You can tell these plants have grown in the 10 days that I planted them because when I stake them, I always stake them up as high as I possibly can. And now I've got a lot higher plant taller plant to stake to as soon as these tomatoes uh, grow up large enough I will remove the stake and stake them directly to the trellises these little things right here are what I love to use they're called ag ties they're cheap 
and I actually cut these in half because I don't need the big long ones uh, until the tomatoes get you know really huge so that's just a little extra tip there hope this was informative stay tuned for the next video all about bugs y'all remember bye and have a good one. Thank you.